Well, hello. As you guys always know, I say it is showtime. And so welcome to Night with your host, Latanya Washington. I am so excited that you are here. I am so excited about what we're doing. I am so excited about your future and the things that are going to be coming out of you. And so today I get the chance to speak to Clarence. We call him Mr. Pencil Man himself who is a well-known artist, a celebrity artist. And I'm telling you all, I've literally never seen anyone do what he does to take the pencil and literally create art. And so I'm excited to talk to him today. We're going to talk about his journey. And I say, Clarence, let's get it in. Well, hello, it's LaTanya Washington. And as I said before, I have the pencil man with me today. And I am so excited that he had the chance um, and the time to be with me this afternoon. So first of all, let me say thank you so much for being a part of Night School, Clarence. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. I am so glad, um, way, way, and, and, and as I always say, um, greetings to everyone from Southern California, from to you all way on the East Coast, to you all in the Midwest, here in the West, and to you all down there in the dirty, dirty South. That's what I say every single time. <laughs> and I love it, but I'm excited because um, as I was sharing with you before, I think it's always good that we get the chance to hear people's journey because Absolutely. everyone has a story in the midst of them going from point A to point B all the way to point Z. And today's story um, and today's night school is all about encouraging people who may be scared to step out or may not really, really understand what am I supposed to do? What is my purpose? What skills do I have and what do I need to develop? And so we wanted to hear your story on this afternoon, Clarence. And so I know you hail from Alabama. Do they have red dirt in Alabama? Dirty South. <laughs> <laughs> from the dirty South. Is it red dirt in Alabama? Yes. Red dirt. Okay, red clay. Red clay. Okay. See, and I always told someone, I said, next time you all go down south of Mississippi or Alabama, please bring me back some red clay. Just, <laughs> just because. But I want to hear your story because I know you at the place of arrival, but I don't know your story. So I want to hear from you. Share a little bit about um, what made you go into this? What made you really, really step out into um, a true artist? Right. See, you, you hear some uh, some key points there. A lot of people know or they see or recognize the now. They don't know the was. <laughs> it's a whole lot between the was and the now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and for me, you know, it started off as uh, very youthful age of like five or six. Okay. You know, I knew I had something. I knew what it was. I could I could draw anything. Even at that point, uh, I never had that stick figure syndrome. Okay. I don't remember that. I just remember drawing objects. Just you know, and it, it evolved over the years, right? But in the midst of that, and I had parents that had um, awesome support. You know. Uh, Dad would always encourage me and never said, boy, put down that pencil. You know, he said, keep doing what you're doing. Um, eventually, it's going to be your sole source of income. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. whatever, Dad. You know, I'm like, I just like to draw. Right. But that support from him and my mom and a couple of oh, teachers that I were very... Froze up a little bit. I had some teachers that were very supportive as well. You know, so uh, I don't know, our contest. Oh, I think we're having a little bit. 
You having a problem? In and out. We're having a little bit of a technical difficulty. Okay. okay keep talking. I just kidding. I just finished talking. Well, you remember the the, uh, the drum head, drummy head characters in the TV guys from back in the day? Well, I won that twice. At 13 and 14, I won a, a $15 check, a $25 check. Uh, I had art and um, a magazine way back then called Soul Team. Um, I did a picture of JJ from Good Times. And, and, and every month, they would, they would uh, uh, publish artwork from kids all over the country. And mine made it to the magazine. So it was a big deal. You know, little kid from the country, country road, dirt, you know, gravel road. You know, <laughs> with the red clay dirt, red clay dirt, you know, just by stay active in what I was doing and the support yeah. I was getting was instrumental in me uh, continuing going forward. Right. So I was known as the artist in the community. You know, if somebody needs something drawn, they would come to me. You know, I do stuff with, you know, people like that. And my dad would bring jobs home from his co-workers for me to draw. Man, 14 years old, making, you know, 40, 50 bucks a pop. I had my own pro kids, my own, you know, Chuck Taylors, my jeans and my little outfits, you know. <laughs> so so going forward, I finished high school, went to college for about six months for art. I got a B in that class, and that B devastated me. Yeah. I stopped drawing for two years. Wow. Yeah. So uh joined the military. And I was in my room drawing a, a picture of Lionel Richie, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And this sergeant came by my door. He saw me drawing it. He said, man, that is great. You should draw something for um, Black History Month in the base library. I was in the Air Force at the time, right? I was like, no, I'm good. I just draw for fun. He said, man, you working your talent. He said, every day at five, between 5 and 5.30, I'm going to come bang on your door until you say yes. I said, come on, Cleus. <laughs> but like that Nothing but a short walk. Nothing but a short walk. walk. <laughs> but a short walk. Every day. <laughs> Monday through to Thursday. He paid on my door. And on Friday, I just, I left the door open. He said, the door's open. I said, I submit. I do these drawings for this Black History Month program. And to, to hush you up. So I did my 10 drawings really quick. They were okay to me, but everyone else thought they was phenomenal. And I had this um, female captain who wanted the one I did, Billy D. Williams. Mm -hmm. And so I want that picture. I want that at the end of the art exhibit. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool. So the first weekend in March, we have potluck at her house. And everybody's in there. I mean, all the health ministries, the choir members, ushers. And she said, uh, Clarence, do you have my artwork? I said, yes, it's in, uh, it's in the car. She said, go get it. I go get it, bring it back in. I got a suit on, suit and tie. I'm, all, I'm dressed to kill. You know, I'm, I'm looking sharp and dapper and everything. But she said, well, how much is it going to cost me? I hadn't really thought about it, right? This is 1986. I said $30. She looked at me. She was like, $30? Now I'm sweating. I'm, I'm thinking it's too much, right? <laughs> she said, if you had said 100 bucks, I would have paid you. And I was like, great. She said, no, I got a deal. So she wrote me a check for $75, I think it was. Put it in my hand and didn't let go, kind of pulled me toward her and said, if I ever hear about you saying this stuff short again, okay. I will a size female shoot. Ten, mm -hmm. A size 10 female shoot. I know she meant by that, right? Okay. So from that point on, I know I set myself short. I know my worth. Yeah. And that's one thing that artists today have to know is to know your worth. Right. You know, uh, we're not a dime a dozen. It's not very, it's not very many people at my level of excellence that I know of. So yeah. when I get someone, get someone a quote, that's where it is. You know, I'll work with you, but the price is going to be where it is. You know, uh, 
Right. And so, and that's another thing that I think a lot of times when people are in the business or they're literally, literally trying to um, find their way, you know, because I was, we were saying everyone has that journey. So even when you getting, I'm, I'm very, it, what I find very, very interesting is the fact that you said when you got that B, you said to yourself, I am done. But you know what? It, it's a lot of people, especially when they think the way you think. I think people that are in art, that are very creative and artistic, it's hard to to not, uh, you know, <laughs> excel it and so you know what and i'm glad that you continued on because your artwork is simply simply phenomenal and another thing that you touched on was the fact that your father um and your parents really really um encouraged you to keep going but i know that you all hear the fact that he said he was not a a pencil what did you call it? the stick man now you know we drew sticks all the time <laughs> i skipped that phase you know what but the one thing that uh uh kind of put me upward it's just, I'm still soaring upward because I listen. Yeah. And when I was in Japan, Okinawa would just uh, Okinawan would always win our contest. I never won anything. I always got armor mention. I was good, but he was phenomenal, right? So I can uh, armor mention kept me really busy with projects in the, in the dorms and stuff like that. But one event, he pulled me to the side. He was like, "Ponta san." Uh, how much time do you put into your artwork? I was like, man, I just like to get it over with, <laughs> you know, as soon as I can. He was like, that's it. He said, you got to put more time into what you're doing. Take your time. You know, inch by inch scenario, right? And I'm six foot three. He's about five foot nothing, right? <laughs> but, but full of knowledge that I absorb like a sponge when you say it that, right? So about a year goes by, I come back to the States and in California, I earned our contest. Mm -hmm. I won first, second, and third place. Because, <laughs> because your work is phenomenal. And like I was saying before, and I'm sure people can attest to this because I've never, never seen anything because we see artwork all the time and there are great artists out there, but I've never seen anyone take a pencil and get it done. So let me ask you this on a piece for what you're doing, because you how long does it literally take you to draw? Um, because I've seen football players. Right. How long does it literally take you to do something like that? You know, I got to prepare my brain. Yeah. You know, for it first, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, and it took me a while to get to it. But once yeah. I get to it, uh, not long at all, really. I mean, the things I've learned, I've been doing this for you know, 50 years, right? right. Over, over 50 years. So once I see it, I get in a zone, I get the, the right amount of rest the night before, I can charge into it, and in a matter of days, it's done. Wow. See, see, now that's a gift. Now that is a gift. And that's what I wanted people here to, to recognize and to realize. Never sell yourself short. Everyone Never. goes through ashes to get to their greatness. And so it, it, it's the thing that's in that story that gives us the advantage. And that's the thing that I always try to share with people. That's the advantage. And then honing in on your skills, like the man told you, put some more time into it. Go I ahead. think about Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. They, they, they were known to be phenomenal because they put in the work. Got put they in the work. In the work. And so I think that's key for people. And I want you to share a little bit about that because I think that's something that a lot of people need to hone in and focus in on. You have to put in the work to cultivate your skills, correct? You do. You got to put in the work and you can't expect an uh, instamatic result yeah. either. I mean, myself, I've drawn stuff and I still have it in my archives from like five years ago. I did one of Jan, uh, James Earl Jones five years ago. I thought it was a bomb. I thought it was, a, you know, the shiznicks, you know, so to speak, right? <laughs> But I pulled it out about two months ago and looked at it. And I said, oh, no, this is not at my current skill level. Wow. So I put about three more hours into it, knowing your, if, you, if you can notice your growth is not as optimum from something you did years ago. You can pull it back out. But I put my, about three more hours into it. 
it looks like a realistic the bomb reach out and touch someone picture now so wow. that being said know know that it's going to take time yeah. you know i see people all the time they they they, they, they could kind of discourage mm -hmm. a little bit by want to compare yeah you can't compare me to you mm -mm. you're not you're, i'm on another level but you right. can get there but it's right. going to take pra uh, practice dedication perseverance you know to get there and uh, open an ear to listen. I mean, right. I, I critique, I mentor the people all over the United States. You know, yeah. uh, I, I can look at a picture and tell what's wrong with it. Mm. And the eyes, if the eyes are off, the whole thing is jacked up. You can tell, and you can tell <laughs> just by, see, and see, that's a gift. Cause you know, we'll sit there and be like, I can't draw worth a lick. I'm gonna tell you that right now. And, and that's what fascinates me so much about um, you as an artist and people who are artists because that creativity is amazing. And I, I know I, I don't have the gift in that. And but you have people out there that really, really um, do have the gift, but they just need to be, um, you know, cultivate what it is that they have going on, whatever thing that people are going into. Um, well, you have to cultivate it. Am I right? You do. You do. And, and you, yeah. you, you have to. Take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. Yeah. I mean, you can, I, I ask the question often to other artists, do you have any video footage of anything you've done? Yeah. Or have you had any interviews like we have them right now? Right. Uh, anything, any newspaper articles? Most of them say no. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, say, I was in the military and documentation validates what you say. Right. Now, you ain't gotta have an upscale art exhibit like I do right. most of the time. It could be ten chairs in your backyard, right. some pictures on those chairs, invite your friends and family, neighbors, cousins, cooking them, come over and uh they get what you're doing. Have someone video record you talking to somebody, take some snapshots of people looking at your artwork, and put a little video together on the little app on your phone, post on YouTube, call it a day. Call it a day. <laughs> Share with and somebody. You, could. you know. And and that is so true because I don't I'm, I don't think people understand the power of social media or digital media. It is very and this is what we were talking about last week. It is very very powerful. And right. if you allow yourself and your artistic nature and your creativity to do what you do, your skills, no matter what it is that you're doing, and putting it out there to the masses, and that is part of credibility, and it develops trust. People being uh, more trusting of you as well. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know. So I don't go to any event expect anything uh, uh, miraculous. I just go and uh, and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. You know? That mindset, that mindset going in just like that. But like you were saying at the beginning, the mindset, when you go in to draw, I, when I asked you that question, how long does it take you? You said sometimes when you get literally preparing your mind and then when you get into it you get into a zone and boom it's done right I think and some, that's and, and that mind thing talk about that yeah i mean you, you, you the mindset is for me is i can accomplish anything i want to accomplish yeah you know no one can derail you from your goal yeah. i did i went to a um uh, a youth camp last week talked to some kids you know uh and um, in their mind, I said, well, at the end of my talk, our conversation we were having, I said, we're going to do an art exercise. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a spider web. Now, 50% of the class said, I can't do, I can't draw. I can't do a spider web. I was like, what you say? Can't? What's that? I removed that from my vocabulary a long time ago, you know, and, and, they were like admin about they couldn't do it, right? I said, I tell you what, I'm gonna take a pen, uh, this pen, or this marker on this dry erase board, and all you gotta do is follow me. Mm -hmm. Can you listen? Can you get in your brain to understand, to follow the steps to, for comprehending this? They had to break it down to some of young, almost so young, like, like five to thirteen years old, right? So I said, I follow, so follow me. I did a line this way, I did a line, you know, this way. And I, I said, let me see, let me see everybody's paper. They showed me the paper. I said, make a half of those 
halves. Then then everybody did that, right? And now make halves of those halves. Now do upside down C's or uh, or U's all the way around about two or three times. I said, what you got what you got now? Name percent had a spider web. Had a spider web. You said 90% had a spider web. You know what I'm saying? Like, now who let me see those hands of the one who said they can't. I, I don't see no hands. I know no I heard I, I know I heard some. <laughs> See, so at the beginning, it's a, mindset, right? it's a mindset. It's a mindset of stepping into. But the, and the good thing about it is because, like you were saying, you received the encouragement as well from your parents. Oh yeah, you were going through, and so now here it is that you now are able to encourage other young people, not just the young people, but even the older people oh, to yeah. go step by step. Because I just heard you say you took them step. By step now, step do this. Step. don't you just okay? Everybody draw, don't just draw a spider web, but no. go step by step. And a lot of times, that's what people need, they just they need, need that. someone that will encourage them and to be there for them and say, Okay, we can go, we can do this because you already have a story, and because um, you can be more empathetic with people that are just trying to figure this thing out. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you have to be patient. Uh, yeah. in order to help others grow. Yeah. You know, you got to be patient with yourself first. <laughs> you know, you, you know what it took you to get from point A to point B. Yeah. And you can't expect anybody else to just jump to point B before starting, I mean, uh, starting point A, right. you know. So I'm patient, you know, uh, I have a, a good ear. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm cool like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm cool like that. And I, I and, and the thing about it is, uh, I share a lot of stories. Yeah. That people that sometimes they can gravitate to. That's what in one particular, back in the 2010 time frame, I was feeling some kind of way mm -hmm. about the support I wasn't getting from friends and family, uh, coaches, people I grew right. up with, stuff like that, right? And God was like, this man, I'm like, what's up, Big G? He said, what the look? What's that look for? I said, "What look?" He said, "That, that look of uh, feeling some kind of way." Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know what you're going through. He said, "It's a father." I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a, a 2012 parable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, "Go to the kitchen." I said, oh. "Okay." He said, "Tear a piece of paper towel." I said, "All right." He said, "Get the pepper out of the cabinet and put a dash of pepper in the middle of the paper towel." That's all right. He said, what do you see? I said, I see a, a dash of pepper in the middle of the paper towel. Mm -hmm. Well, how much the paper towel is consumed by the paper? About 1%. How much is left? Then 9%. That smidget of 1% represents all those people that you feel some kind of way about. Don't sweat the small stuff. The rest of that paper is the rest of the world that you go conquer uh, new patrons, clients, customers, connect, uh, networking individuals, Woo. opportunities, you know, success, you know, pro productivity, you know, all that is over there waiting for you to go conquer. Right. So go, so go get it. Wow, that's good. And that's and good. That, and, that's and good. <laughs> that, makes, that makes a whole lot of sense because I think what happens, um, and that just goes back to your your gifts will make room for you. Exactly. And so you were not given that talent just because you were given that talent to be used. And Absolutely. so I love that analogy because a lot of times we sit back and we go through, we have the stories, we get to that place. And now we're looking at people like, can I can I get some support? Can I get some help? But maybe that's not where the help and support is supposed to come from. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a whole nother world out there waiting for you. And absolutely. once again, as you were saying, that mindset of it's okay. There's other mm -hmm. people waiting on me. Absolutely. And then, yeah. and another thing that people got got come to grips with, the law of averages would never change. Mm -hmm. One in 10 is going to say yes. Nine out of 10 is going to say no. <laughs> And one in ten is always enough. It's so it's enough. It really it, is it, enough. <laughs> no, it really is enough. Yes, one in ten. Uh, if I get ten out of ten, I wouldn't be able to sleep. 
See what I'm saying? But you know what? And I, and, I, and I hope people understand this. It comes with going through stuff and it comes with life. The, the more and more you're doing the thing and the more and more you begin to understand, you begin to understand that. The mm -hmm. one in 10, it's enough. It's enough. That one, one person can, can just blow your mind while you chasing 10. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> no, your story is too powerful. Yeah. Right, and then, and then a lot of times the events you go to, they're not all hype. I mean, they're right. probably brief, nice events and whatever. Sometimes they don't turn out to be what you think they're going to be. That's right. I had one, and uh, I had like a handful of people showed up. Yeah, I'm gonna piss me. I, I I expect a whole lot of people, right? But I recorded. That's right. An event. You. Whoever showed up, I recorded me talking to him, taking exactly. snapshots. Blah, blah blah. I put on, on on social media. A guy from Beverly Hills saw it on somebody's page. We were even friends, right? They saw us on his page, yeah. And he liked it, so I went to his profile. I saw him from Beverly Hills. That's what you got. When you're building your brand, you got you got to you know you got to pay attention, right? So I sent him a friend request. He said yes. Uh, I saw he was associated with Motown. Send me a friend, send me a friend request. He said yes. Within within five minutes, my messenger phone rings. It was him saying, "Would you be willing to donate some prints to Barry Gordy of Motown right. Records Family Fundraiser?" Bingo. <laughs> you know, so you gotta be assertive. Uh, and this one phrase, everybody, this cl uh, cliche. Everybody uh, hears all the time. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. It's more to it than that. It's more to it. It's, 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 another, it's another part that everybody don't, don't know. The other Speak part is, it. What is, the other it? Part is you got to roll up your sleeve it. <laughs> you got to roll up your sleeve it. You got to take action, work, you know. You got to do the work. You can believe all you want. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to use it. And I tell people, you have to use your advantage because we all we have come with advantage points, whether you're educated, whether you went and got your doctorate, master's, bachelor's, associate, you uh, GED, graduated from high school. It all plays a part in our life and our life story because everyone is assigned to other people or whether you're assigned to one other person, whether you're assigned to millions, it doesn't matter, but you have to step into that thing that you were called to step into so you can make a difference. And, and seriously, Clarence, I believe that's why we're here on this earth. Right. We were given gifts and we were given talent to Absolutely. go and cultivate those gifts and those talents and those skills so we can help other people along the way because Absolutely. people need People need us. Oh yeah, I mean, all that. My journey is. is we could talk for twenty four hours. <laughs> but, but the last thing I'm going to mention is all my travels and all my accomplishments and stuff. And yeah. led up to what's going on right now. Yeah. I uh, was hand selected by a CEO of a, a sports magazine. Yeah. To create art for the magazine. Mm. The covers, all the covers, indefinitely, exclusively, forever, and. I make it, I make it history with that. Uh, I'm the only other person that ever do something like that was Norman Rockwell from way back in the day. Wow. And it's called Sports Life Magazine. It's on the newsstands okay. nationwide now. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's more. I, I'll plug more stuff into that a little later, but that's one. Let that be known that yours truly. If I always say you can pay me now, or can't pay me later. Uh oh, okay, you all hear that? I like that. Pay me now, or you can't even pay. <laughs> you can't afford me, as you, know? you can't even afford me. I like that. I like that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now that that right there is huge. And so, can you imagine if you stopped? Can you imagine if you literally stopped when you got that B, um, as a young a young kid? Yeah. You are you know? in everything that you have going on with your life. And that's like with everyone. Don't forfeit that thing that you were called to. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Give you us know? your last words for this afternoon, because you're right. We can talk about this 
and life journeys for a, forever and ever. But give me your final words that you want to say to encourage people that are looking to step out even into artistry. I, I would always say this to everyone. Yeah. Uh, whose dream are you dreaming? Yeah. Whose dream are you dreaming? Whose dream are you dreaming? <laughs> yours. That. Yeah. It's yours. And so can nobody derail you from your dream? You know, right. you are you are the one who, at, at the end of the day, in charge of your own, of your own destiny. So don't right. let anyone tell you anything to derail you from the dream that you have to achieve anything you want to achieve in life because uh, you, you're in charge of that. Go Go get it. Go get it. Go out and get it. You did not go through the things you went through in life. As I said, from ashes to tell the story, we all didn't go through what we went through in life just to sit still and to do absolutely nothing that we were purposed to do. And so, as you said, go out and get it. Don't allow yourself to be derailed from no. people, from words, from situations. Stick with it, even if it means that you have to climb out of a hole. <laughs> That's right. Go get it, right? No, no, I got one word. Yeah. This all together. It's going to be on a t-shirt next week. Uh-oh. It's called Stay With It Ability. Stay with it. Okay, what does that mean? Stay with it ability. That means that what it really, the definition of it is pretty much what I just said, you know, you, you're in charge of your own of your own destiny. If, if you don't have that stable ability, you, you're going to quit. You're going to stop. You're going to give up. You're going to let uh, the naysayers disrupt what you got going on. So right. stable ability conquers all that. Just, just push to the side and keep pushing forward. You achieve your goals that you want. You will achieve your goals. And that's it. And that, that that is that is an amazing statement. And I tell people sometimes I have to say, God help. God help. And then go on about my business. And he definitely he does. Hears you. So, you know. Yeah, he, if you got a, a, a relationship with him, yeah. you know his voice. Yeah, you hear. Period. You hear his voice. And that's real. You know. And so it, it's amazing. And so thank you so much for sharing this information with us on this afternoon. I, like you said, you didn't even go for, to the pencil man. Because I remember we all drew the stick. <laughs> the stick. We drew the stick. And we went on, we might we might draw a head on top with some dots for eyes, and we went on about our business. That's all we knew how to do. So you bypass that area. I knew, I that's knew. why. That's why yeah. you are the pencil man. No one else but you. You are amazing. You are, you know, you are a trailblazer. You have set the path for so many people. And That's I right. know that so many people that are, will come up behind you to really, really be able to get a grip on this thing. Um, because so many people just need someone to encourage them and to see the path and to see, wow, if he did it, I can do it too. Absolutely. And so thank you so much. And so people can definitely, um, if they want to connect with you, if they want themselves drawn, they can connect with you. Um, I know we have the information um, on you, but share, um, you're on Twitter, share all of that information with our with our viewers. All my information on all my sites is, is really my name, Clarence Porn. Yeah. But the one that uh, don't get, Buried with messages is my, is my website one, <laughs> ClarencePointer.com. Let's go there, contact page, and uh, it, it won't it won't get buried with all my gazillion messages I get every day. With all the other messages that you have going on, because he's famous, you all. He's just famous. He's just fa he's just famous. But thank you so much for for being with me this afternoon um, here in Southern California. You you hail all the way from Alabama. I yeah. hail all the way from the Midwest, the great state of Ohio. And it's amazing <laughs> how people connect. It's yeah. amazing what we go through. It's amazing the stories that we dealt with to get to where we are now <sighs> was all with purpose. And so once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to you all who had the chance to watch this night school. You can always watch it over and over again, especially to you all that, you know, we all need to be encouraged. We all need to understand that we have a path and we all have a story. And we've all a lot of times been at the bottom 
as with the song say, was at the bottom, now we here at the top. I forget how this song go, Clarence. <laughs> but <laughs> it is so true. So once again, you guys, thank you so much for being with me here on Night School. Thank you, Clarence, for taking out your time in this hot weather yes, yes. afternoon. And until next week, you, until next week, you all stay safe, stay connected. And keep on powering through to do the things that you were called to do. Yeah.